Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we will deep dive into the Tuckman model, which helps us not only understand a team's journey, but also systematically manage or develop a team through that journey. You're probably asking yourself, what is the Tuckman model? Did I miss anything? For many people, the name Tuckman doesn't really ring a bell. But once I describe the model to you, you will say, ah, I've heard this before. So the Tuckman model describes four stages that a team goes through. Forming, storming, norming, and performing. Does that ring a bell? I guess so. I describe the Tuckman model in a very simplified way. On the horizontal axis, we look at the time, the journey that the team takes. On the vertical axis, we look at the team effectiveness. So at the baseline, one plus one would equal two. There are no frictions, but also not really synergies. Once a team becomes more effective, one plus one is greater than two. But if they are less effective, if they have too much friction, one plus one would be less than two. Based on these two axes, we can now look at the four stages, forming, storming, norming, and performing. Forming is the stage when a team gets initially assembled. In that stage, there are no true synergies. There's also very little friction. So we draw them right on the baseline. In that stage, you usually observe almost every team member doing tasks individually. Very little collaboration taking place. But once the team starts to move towards tasks that require more collaboration, because ultimately they are assembled based on having a common goal and needing each other, they move into the storming phase. Storming is characterized by a lot of friction, by a lot of arguments, maybe even fights. In the storming phase, a team does not share a shared understanding in terms of how they're going to collaborate. They don't have a shared understanding in terms of who is responsible for what. So many questions that teams need to address are still unclear for teams and based on that, they go into the storming phase. The storming phase is a great opportunity to understand what are the things that you need to tackle first to make your team more effective. Once you identify those things, once you start creating working agreements, once you teach everyone about their role, about their responsibilities, the team moves from storming into norming. That's where you actually establish norms. And the norming phase is ultimately the foundation to move into performing, where one plus one is much bigger than two. In some cases, we even see teams become 16x more productive than they initially were. The Tuckman model is great because many of us have observed or have been part of teams that have been through this journey. We can empathize with it. The Tuckman model is also great because it creates a shared terminology. We can talk about these things. Once your team is also aware of the different stages, you can talk about them and you can identify ways to move from one step to the other. Another reason why I like the Tuckman model is that it lays out the overall journey. And that journey demonstrates to us that every step of the way, no matter how hurtful they are, can be beneficial. For example, the storming phase making us aware of all the things where we need to create a shared understanding first. As with all other models, the Tuckman model is just a way, a mental model of thinking about something. It does not capture the truth, but it still can be very helpful for us to systematically develop our teams. Looking at the Tuckman model, the question might arise that at some point all teams are performing, correct? That's not necessarily true. Even if we provide great coaching, even if the teams have a lot of awareness, at some point, teams that are performing are broken up. Why? Because the project comes to an end. We see and we observe in organizations over and over again that they assemble a team, that team moves through that journey, sometimes they get to the performance stage, but once they're performing, at some point, the project comes to an end, and then the team is disassembled again. So how can we deal with this? As with many other things, we need to go back to the initial assumptions we make and how we assemble teams. In most organizations, 
Teams are assembled around their hard skills. A developer, a tester, a designer. But when we look at the journey that a team takes based on the Tuckman model, it's more about creating a shared understanding and building trust and relationships. All of those things are soft skills. And hard skills can be taught. So when we take this understanding of the Tuckman model, the duration it takes to move a team to high performance, and combine this with our learning about cross-functional teams, moving people from I-shaped to T-shaped, we can change or at least challenge one deep assumption that a lot of organizations hold. So when we challenge that assumption and instead of moving people to projects, have long-lasting teams where we assign projects to those teams, we can have high-performing teams that from time to time need to expand their hard skills, need to expand their skill set to be able to tackle those projects as well. I hope this brief description of the Tuckman model and how we connect it to the other learnings as part of systematically developing teams helps you to become a better Scrum Master, a better Agile Coach and a better leader. In our next videos, we're going to explore a few other models for team development that can all be combined with the Tuckman model. See you in those videos.